Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Today, my revamp to 1 to 99 Agility Guide. This skill has two crucial functions in the game. The first and most important one is that the higher agility level, the faster your run energy will regenerate. And second, it lets you use many shortcuts in the game, some used for other activities. Agility is by far one of the least popular skills in the game, as you are simply clicking on your screen to go around in circles. Unlike other slow skills that can be sped up with tick manipulation, this one doesn't have that luxury. I will still show you how to level it up in the most efficient way possible to get it over with quickly. So, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe with notifications on, and consider becoming a channel member for instant access to our Discord and other cool perks. These are all the quests that provide agility experience as of the time of making this video. Remember that some of them have an agility level requirement, and you may not be able to do them right away. Agility is weird in a way that experience from questing is extremely desirable, but we kinda need to train it traditionally during the early levels because of a set of items I will mention in a little bit. However, we will still be skipping some training, as there are two quests that will speed up the beginning quite massively. As for what quests are 100% recommended to train agility, well, you don't really need anything. Everything you see here are merely suggestions, and I will mention them from most to least important as we have some great training methods locked behind the questing. I would absolutely advise you to do the quest The Sins of the Father. Once you have access to the Vampire City of Darkmare, you will be able to train at the Hallowed Sepulcher, in my opinion, the best training method in the game. If dark places are not your cup of tea, you may instead do the Song of the Elves quest. The Crystal City of Perfinus features an agility course where you are able to get crystal shards from skilling, and specifically agility. By completing the Hard Kandarin Diary, you will have the option to change your Camelot Teleport to the Seer's Village Teleport. This will greatly speed up one of the training methods, and this diary has a ton of other great benefits. One of the alternative training methods will take us to the Ape Atoll Agility course. To be able to visit the island inhabited by monkeys, you will need completion of Monkey Madness 1, one of the most iconic quests in the history of the game. And finally, another alternative training method by the name of the Werewolf Skullball will need completion of both the Priest in Peril and the Creature of Reconstrain, both for access to Mauritania and for a Ring of Keros for you to access the activity. Priest in Peril also lets us access Canifis for one of the rooftop courses. Now, just like questing, you don't really need anything to train agility efficiently, so you can also see this list as a bunch of suggestions which are not even needed on your way to 99, but will of course enhance your experience. By training at the rooftop courses, you will gather Marks of Grace. These are randomly found every time you start a new lap, and you may use them at the Rogue's Den to buy the Graceful Outfit, and once you have it, you can buy Amalized Crystal Packs. And speaking of, the Graceful Outfit has a passive effect to regenerate run energy quickly, depending on how many pieces you are wearing. It is one of the very first things you should do on any account, and has a ton of great recolors. An item that may come in handy for running so much is the Stamina Potion. Not only will it grant you 20 run energy automatically, but it's going to decrease the rate at which it's drained when running for a whole minute. And speaking of running, the Ring of Endurance is an item that can be charged with doses of Stamina Potion in order for this effect to jump from 1 to 2 minutes. It's pretty expensive for what it does, so don't worry too much about it until you are in the late game. The last item is a Summer Pie. This will boost your agility level by 5, and will allow you to train at certain courses before you have the level required for them. This doesn't work for the Hallowed Sepulchre, for example. For Agility, we only have one useful plugin, and I bet you'll never guess what it's called. That's right, Agility. This is an all-in-one plugin that will highlight click boxes on Agility courses, as well as visual tools for the Hallowed Sepulchre. Make sure to have this one active at all times even if you're not training, as it's also going to highlight shortcuts on your screen. Alright fellas, as some of you know, Agility is pretty painful especially during the early levels. I highly recommend you start your journey with a Taurus to Trap quest, for which you need level 10 fletching and 20 smithing. This will be worth it because after the quest, you will get the 2 XP lamps worth of 4650 experience each, both of which should absolutely be used on agility. This will take you to level 26, skipping a whole bunch of training. You will then head to the Trinum Stronghold and get started on the Grand Tree quest. This requires level 25 agility, which you already have, and by completing the adventure you will gain an additional 7900 experience. This will bump our level up to 32, and this is where we can actually start the training. After this you are going to go to the rock and use the rooftop agility course from levels of 32 to 40. Technically speaking there's a faster way to get to level 40 which I'll mention during the alternative training methods, but you want to start grinding towards that grateful outfit ASAP. Depending on how focused you are you may get between 10 and 13k experience per hour, and no more than 14 marks of grace at the same time. 
I'm not gonna be counting these for profit because we will use them for the graceful outfit. At level 40 we have one of the best methods to obtain marks of grace, the Canifis Rift up course. The reason for that is because the lap is pretty short but there are more obstacles to go through, leading to more chances for the item to spawn. From experience you will have enough marks of grace for the full outfit at about level 60, so I personally recommend you stay here until 260 marks. But if you don't care about them, or if you have enough, go to the Falador rooftop course instead for more experience per hour but less marks at level 50. At level 60 you are free from the swamp and we are now going to go to the Seer's rooftop agility course. This starts at the bank and you are going to run counterclockwise to finish the lap next to the church entrance. By running back to the bank and repeating the process you will gain upwards of 40 to 45k XP per hour, along with around 100 to 130 kgp per hour if you sell your marks of grace for amylized crystals. Another method of doing this which I highly recommend is for you to complete the hard Kandarin diary. This will allow you to right click the Camelot teleport and make it so the default option takes you to the Seer's village bank, right next to the start of the rooftop course. This will bump up the experience to between 50 and 55k, and with the diary done you will get even more marks of grace. If you decide to skip this you may do the Polnifni rooftop course at level 70, and work on either method until you reach level 72. This is where we can start on the absolute best course in the entire game, the Hallowed Sepulchre. Not only does it feature superior experience and profit per hour, but once you do this comfortably, you will have learned so much about movement and your overall skill will increase significantly. I will give you a short summary of the activity as well as the general strategy and the rewards, but in order to avoid making this segment alone like 10 or 15 minutes long, click on the link in the description for me to take you through a full run telling you everything I am thinking of. So in short, the Hallowed Sepulchre can be found in Dark Mayor, and once inside there is a chest for you to prepare. Since you will have no rewards on you, copy the gear you see on screen, and all of these items can be obtained pretty easily. Instead of doing a single lap for experience, the Hallowed Sepulchre features 5 floors, all of which you may access at levels 52, 62, 72, 82, and 92 respectively. The meta has shifted in a way that if you already have the full graceful outfit, it's more profitable to stay here until level 99 for both more experience and the GP per hour. Each floor has different paths you will have to take in order to make it till the end. The only exception is floor 5 which will always be the same. When starting a new floor you will have a set timer for you to make it till the end for you to go to the next floor. The obstacles you will encounter are the following. Wizard statues will shoot fire after a short cycle. Knight statues will throw a sword and it will return to them like a boomerang. Crossbow statues will shoot bolts in a straight line. And for all of these, if you are hit by either the flames, the sword or the bolts, you will take damage and it will send you back a few tiles to take on the obstacle again. Priest statues will summon lightning which will strike down and stun you if they come into contact. This won't damage you or send you back, but if it's combined with other obstacles, you will likely be sent back. Finally, we have strange tiles which will light up randomly throughout the course. If you step on a lit blue tile, you will be a few spaces forward, and it's going to make you invulnerable for a few ticks. Stepping on a yellow tile will in sense send you back, also giving you a few ticks of invincibility. The farther you make it, the obstacles will become more complicated and of course much faster, which will add on to the difficulty of this activity. Now, you might be wondering, why are we taking all of the items I showed you at the beginning? Well, let's now talk about loot. Once you feel comfortable making it to the end of the floor with some time remaining, you now have two options. Either restart the whole run, or you may now loot the chests hidden behind even more obstacles to make more cash. The only guaranteed chest you have is at the end of floor 5, if you make it in time, which has a chance of dropping the Ring of Endurance. Any other chest is completely optional. First, you have broken bridges. Take a hammer, a saw, planks and nails in order to build a bridge, and walk across. To get past the Ceradome Embrasure, you will need two Vampire Dust to go through the barrier. To use a portal frame, you must have Jewelry Enchantment Runes and click on the portal. The higher level, the higher the chance to activate it. But go up to level 6, as level 7 enchantment is way too expensive. Finally, you have pillars which you can go across by using a crossbow and a grapple. Once next to the coffin, you will need a lockpick to increase the chance of opening it. And then, you have to go through the obstacle again to go back to the course. Keep in mind that you can fail all of these which will make the chest inaccessible, or you will have to go through the obstacle again, wasting precious time. Like I said before, in order for me not to explain every single segment of every single floor, and make the section like 10 minutes long, the only two general tips I have for you is to remember that you move two tiles when you are running, which you must utilize properly to avoid the yellow tiles. The other is that the end of every floor, if you are wearing a Ceradomin item, 
you can click on these small pillars next to the doors, which will fully restore your energy just in case you forget a stamina potion. And now, for the final part of the Hallowed Sepulchre, the reward. When you loot the chest, you will obtain an item called the Hallowed Mark. You may use these at the store to buy the following items. The Hallowed Crystal Shards cost 1 mark and teleport you directly to the lobby. The Hallowed Token costs 10 marks and will add a whole minute for your overall timer. The Hallowed Tool costs 100 marks each. The Grapple will guarantee you make it across the pillars with your crossbow. The Focus will guarantee the portal activation and for it to be sped up. The Symbol will make it so you only need one Vampire Dust instead of two for the Brazier. The Hammer will never break nails when building bridges. And the Ring will make it so you never take damage failing an obstacle. We also have consumables to use your leftover marks. The Dark Die can be used on graceful pieces to turn them black. The Dark Acorn is a transmog for the agility pet. And the Hallowed Sack contains a random assortment of items for you to sell on the GE. Like I said before, check out the link in the description for me to show you a full uncut run of the Hallowed Sepulchre for you to learn more about it. Now, for the most important part, each floor has its own experience per hour. It will also fluctuate if you are looting chests or not, and I personally loot chests on the floor 4 and 5, as the loot from the first to three floors doesn't offer anything spectacular. If you want more Hallowed Marks, make sure to loot as many chests as possible, and I would also recommend you stay here until 99, unless you want to do something more chill, and that's where the next segment of this video comes in handy. Alright, for alternative methods, we will start at level 1. If you wish to start getting Marks of Grace as soon as possible, do the Gnome Agility course from levels 1 to 10, and then go to Drainer Rooftop course from levels 10 to 20. After which you will go to Alcarin and to train at that rooftop course until level 30. And then follow the previous path. I don't really recommend this because it takes way too long and you'll get a ton of marks of grace at the Cannabis rooftop course regardless. At level 40 and after Monkey Madness, you may train at the Ape Atoll Agility course. This offers okay experience per hour at this level, but most importantly, it will give you transmogs for the monkey you can carry on your back after completion of the Monkey Madness 2 quest. The highest number of laps you need is 2000, giving you a minimum of 1.1 million experience, assuming you don't fail any obstacles. I sadly had to do this twice both for Leagues 2 and 3, which is pretty painful. If you're not afraid of PKers, the Wilderness Agility course is also a decent option for you to train. You can come here with a few stamina potions and some pieces of food, and the best part about this is that if you're able to run circles around PKers, you can tell them to sit which will hurt their ego quite a lot. Not the best option, but definitely decent change of scenery. A method I recommend for Ironman is the Agility Pyramid in the Desert. This is what I've done for a few laps on my hardcore account, and spending just a few minutes for 10k GP doesn't sound too bad when you have pretty low skills. All you need is the desert outfits, water skins, and as much food as you can carry. XP per hour isn't great, but profit is pretty attractive. After completion of Song of the Elves, the Crystal City of Briffinus will be at your disposal. You are able to use the agility course here, which offers great experience per hour at level 75, and most importantly will get you crystal shards passively. The cool part about it is that you may use the portals that spawn through the course to cut a few seconds of your timer, leading to even higher experience per hour if you are fully focused. The last alternative method I recommend is the RD Agility course. You may do this at level 85 after eating a summer pie, which boosts your agility to level by 5. And you may actually do this with any rooftop course like I mentioned at the beginning, and you can even turn on the Preserve Prayer for the boost to last longer. You'll get a ton of Marks of Grace and get upwards of 60,000 experience per hour. And now for three methods I don't recommend, but you can give them a try if they sound attractive. When you're able to, Barbarian Fishing offers passive agility experience since you gain between 5 and 7 experience per fish caught. As you may be able to tell, this is extremely slow, so a decent strategy would be to get full graceful, and then 99 fishing with the Barbarian method, and then continue with any other course. The other two are the Werewolf Skullball activity and the Werewolf Agility course. According to the wiki, these offer some of the highest experience rates per hour, but let's be honest, who do you actually know that uses these? Probably people who shove a crayons up their nose when they were kids. And now, scapers, what do I personally recommend to go from levels 1 to 99 agility? Well, this time I only have two methods for you. Or feel free to mix and match any of the activities you have seen throughout the video. The very first one is simply by following the viable methods before the alternative ones. Questing from 1 to 32, Varrock Rooftop Course from 32 to 40, Canifis from 40 to 60, and then the Sears Rooftop Agility Course from 60 to 72. When you will start doing the Hallowed Sepulchre all the way to the Agility Cape. If your ping or your skill is not good enough for the Sepulchre, stick to the Sears Rooftop Agility course from 60 to 75 if you have the hard Candor and Diary.
and then switch to the Perfinus course to get a ton of crystal shards from 75 to 85. At this point, stock on Summer Pies and stick to the Arty Agility course from 85 to 99 to receive a good chunk of Marks of Grace to buy Amylase Crystals and sell them on the Grand Exchange. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it for the Agility Guide, thank you so much for coming and for making it this far. If you did, make sure to tell me how you would get level 99 agility or if you already have it. A massive, massive thank you to all my channel members, you boys and girls are absolutely insane, and your support goes a long way to feed my starving family. If you want to be part of this list of legends, click the join button below to subscribe monetarily, and receive a ton of benefits in the videos, in the live streams, and of course in the Discord. Stay tuned for the next video, and of course for the next 1 to 99 guide, where I will show you how to achieve mastery in this mything skill. Have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba-ba-ba-ba, uh, peace.